Hello again, my name is Deb Martin, and I appreciate your joining me on this journey, again investigating more about the wild oregano oil and its powers. So today, we're going to continue on. Thank you for being with me. Now, this is about some of the proven healing powers. And very interesting that published in the Journal of Food Protection was an FDA study. This was several years ago. And they were actually trying to disprove that oregano had healing powers. And they ended up proving that it did. So um, they found that, for example, oregano oil, along with cumin and cinnamon oils, destroys all poisonous molds and the mycotoxins that they produce. There was a landmark study at Georgetown University which showed that wild oregano oil is the world's premier antifungal agent. The oil proved more effective than, uh, well, I cannot pronounce some of these things, amphotericin, I guess, B, and nystatin for killing candida in test mice. This was duplicated for bacteria, in this case penicillin resistant staph, where once again oregano oil was superior to any drugs. In an in vitro evaluation, it was found to destroy all bacteria against which it was tested, including tuberculosis and E. coli. Viruses, man, eh, they're equally vulnerable, perhaps more so. In 1995, publishing in the Medical Science Research, uh, a person named Sidiqui found that along with cinnamon oil, it caused complete disintegration of several viruses. Viewing its destructive actions against electron microscopy, he deemed the results remarkable. In a study published in Antiviral Research, it was found to obliterate the cold and flu viruses, including the human coronavirus. This occurred in cell culture. This demonstrated that the oregano oil would surely be effective in humans whose cells are infected. It even killed the bird flu virus, although it required 25 times the dose to achieve this. Which is, of course, another point. If you have a headache, and let's say that you were trying to take aspirin for this headache, and you had a really bad headache, and you took half an aspirin, what do you expect? Well, it's not going to have an impact on the headache. It's not enough. So when you're taking these medicines, and each person would be different, and it's always wise to be working with a clinician who is following up with you, who understands you and your case, who takes you into things at the right level, um, and then there's a whole realm here on cancer. The amount of different types of cancer cells and the antioxidant therapies that are involved. For example, it boosts glutathione and SOD, which is a superoxide dismutase. Now, that may not mean anything to you, but it really does to us. These are protective agents in our bodies, these antioxidants. These are specifically targeted glutathione and the whole process of how our body does build that, uh, and we can intake from foods as well, but the whole process is interrupted, is sabotaged by the, the COVID-19 virus. So um, if you have an antioxidant therapy that's replacing this in a heavy way, you're gonna be probably ahead of the game there too. But uh, all different kinds of cancer, prostate and colon cancer, there are tests to show how effective it was and uh, it's even, they've even done tests to see if it preserved milk oils, and it did, so the oils in milk could stay viable much longer. That's an antioxidant protective effect. And that it, uh, interestingly, it oxidizes germs, so it will blast away the germs, but it doesn't do so to human cells. Rather, it preserves them by grabbing nasty atomic particles. That's his reference to free radicals. Uh, which is it directly absorbs. Plus, its, safe, it's, uh, its safety profile for human tissues is high, yet if made synthetically, the safety is largely lost. So it's, uh, it's important to realize, again, that you have to have the good stuff. Here's a small pilot study done by a New York, Mexi Mexico, or New Mexico gastroenterologist, Dr. Hirsch Inbaim. The wild oregano was shown to destroy H. pylori. Ah, H. pylori virus is implicated in a number of things, particularly ulcers it's most known for. Uh, 
this is the difficult to kill germ also responsible for esophageal reflux, GERD, and stomach ulcers. And the, the, there are sinus sprays that you can use. And uh, in Israel, they've been using a, a spray or a mist that uh, they used and found that within 20 minutes that people had a significant and immediate improvement in symptoms of upper respiratory ailments. Interesting. So those are just a few of the powers that I wanted to talk with you about today. And uh, there's more in this book. I could go on and on. But I think probably this gives you enough of a sense that this is something that you want to take seriously and take a look at using some yourself. If you have more curiosity, please reach out to us, Lotus Blossom Clinic. You can find us at 239-277-1399. And you can also email me directly if you like, deb at lotusblossomclinic.com. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.